Looking through the annals of the Repository of Industrial Security Incidents, or RECI, one finds a litany of cyber incidents that include hacking, sabotage, accidents, and what you could even call cyber stupids. And we know that the ones we know about are less than 10% of the incidents that have happened. Hi, I'm Walt Boys, editor of Control and ControlGlobal.com for the Process Automation Media Network. And this is Back to Basics, Cybersecurity. Like Control's unfettered blogger Joe Weiss, I don't like using the word cybersecurity for industrial control systems. And a few years ago, I coined a new term which has been receiving some credence and support, functional security. I cheerfully admit stealing the term from ISA 84's functional safety standard, and the two issues actually are very similar and interchangeable, and we shouldn't call it cybersecurity. You see, Cybersecurity has a lot of baggage, and it immediately conjures up images of script kiddies or black-hatted evil hackers trying to get into the cyber vault and steal your credit cards. But that's only one of the threats to the proper operation of industrial control systems that can be talked about under the aegis of the term functional security. External threats, hacking, what we normally consider when we think of cybersecurity. But there's also an external threat of accident and internal threats of accident and sabotage. And a breach in physical security of your plant can be a very real threat to the security of your control system. And so, too, can patching and updating your control system be a threat. Each of these things has been shown to have caused cyber, or rather functional, security incidents and in some cases injuries and deaths. The classic external threat example is the damage to the Maruchi Shire wastewater facility caused by Vitek Bowden, a former contractor who had access wirelessly to the control system and used it to force raw sewage discharges where raw sewage shouldn't have gone. But even an external accident like running a car into a pump station can cause a functional security event. And in England last year, an eco-terrorist scaled the fence around a power plant and entering the boiler room physically destroyed portions of the control system, causing, of course, a plant outage. The Olympic pipeline disaster in the late 1990s has been shown to be an example of a functional security incident caused by patching the system, and that caused deaths. The Hatch nuclear power plant suffered a reactor scram because a PLC that controlled the cooling water pumps was misconnected to the wrong network in the plant, and a patch ping caused it to lock up. Power plants, water, wastewater plants, process plants of various kinds all have experienced these functional security incidents. Many functional security experts advocate a defense-in-depth approach so that the onion doesn't get peeled. But it isn't just an issue of fixing the holes. First, you have to establish a security culture in your company. No matter how much security you try to build into the control system, if it isn't ingrained in the culture, with extreme support from top management, ways will be found around the security procedures. After all, the password for the majority of control systems is password. And anything that makes it hard to run a control system in a plant also makes it harder to make product, and that is self-defeating. So security must be one of the core values of the culture at your plant. Furthermore, compliance does not equal increased security. Now that there are some standards being issued for industrial control systems, like NIST 800, ISA 99, and the NERC SIPs, the first reaction of management is to attempt to come into compliance as inexpensively as possible with these standards. In the case of the electric utilities, this has led to follies like renaming control systems control rooms because a room isn't a cybercritical asset according to the NERC SIPs. Compliance is about not getting fined or sued while security is about prevention or mitigation of the damages due to incidents. In fact, a case can be made that the NERC SIPs are actually dangerous because focusing on compliance with them can effectively reduce the actual functional safety of your control system. Finally, there is the significant problem that there are many fewer persons trained in industrial control security than we need. 
We have lots of IT security folk, but industrial control security is quite different. For example, the purpose of IT security is to protect the data, and if downtime is required to do that, so be it. Downtime is lost production, is lost revenue on the plant floor, and history data can be lost long before machines and processes can be turned off. So to have a working functional security program at your plant, you have to have a security culture with management buy-in, management direction, a defense in depth strategy that takes into account external and internal threats as well as accident, and security personnel who are trained in industrial control security. Do that and you'll have a functionally secure plant. This has been another episode of Back to the Basics, Cybersecurity, from the Process Automation Media Network. I'm Walt Boys. Thanks for watching.